forward. All right, so I'm going to get started with sharing my screen. So um, the purpose of this little um, video is to help um, explain how to do post event analysis of your videos. Some people um, have asked me, you know, what do you do with your videos after events, local events and big events? Um, and that's why I kind of wanted to explain what I do with my videos and then I wanted to show some of the tech side and like how you can organize your videos and your feedback to actually make it useful. Um, this doesn't take away from like pen and paper options. Um, so, so feel free to still, you know, if you keep a journal, I know some people like to print out the course maps, like tape them into a journal and like take notes and that's great. Um, the disconnect there is obviously your videos have a lot of the information. And so I like to put my notes with my videos. So I am showing like ways that I have done it um, and different options that people have with different tech options. Um, there's obviously tons of tech options. I'm just going to show like a handful of them that I've, I've used now or in the past. So we'll get started with this. I need to share my screen. Um, one. Okay. And then I need to, okay. So um, YouTube is obviously a very common place to upload videos. And so I'm going to start the first part of this. I'm just going to talk about what I do and how I look at my videos. And then I'm going to talk about where I put those notes. So the first thing, um, Reviewing videos is really, really important um, for your future path um, and determining uh, what you want to work on next, determining um, what went well also, um, and not just what went poorly. So I find people forget the first part, which is what are the things that went well, um, and only focus on the things that didn't go well, and then um, kind of hyper fixate on that. And then this review, it's I find it important to do close to an event, but not so close that you're emotionally still charged from it. So like, I try not to review videos, maybe even like the same day or the next day, because sometimes um, you kind of still feel maybe like frustrated or angered about some of the things that happened. Uh, if it's a really good run, um, those are the ones I like to watch over and over again, because I do want to continue those happy feelings. But um, in terms of doing the analysis, I want to review it close enough to the event that I can still remember what happened but not so close that um, it's too emotional because I want this to be like as um, objective as possible. So I'll review my run. I like doing it on YouTube because you can slow it down. If you've not played with this on YouTube, the playback speed, um, you can slow it down as slow as you want. So I'm going to review it in normal time just to get started, um, refresh myself on what the course was, um, on some of these, especially the four-legged flick, sometimes it's hard to see when you're at the other corner of the ring. So again, some of that is maybe using my memory or you know seeing if I have alternate copies. Maybe a friend took a, a photo or a video from um, like the guardrail over here, and then I would look at them at the same time. So if you have two different angles, um, I would do this analysis with both angles together. So First time through, I'm just kind of refreshing myself. Oh yeah, I remember that air. I remember that bar. Oh, I remember, yeah, I remember that wide turn that, you know, kind of made me a little upset. You know, it, like kind of just go through and kind of put yourself back in the situation. Um, okay, that was the run. So then um, what I do is I review it again. This time I will slow it down. Uh, it's, you know, sometimes just three quarters or sometimes a half. Because this is where I'm going to start, uh, if I'm writing, this is where I'm going to start writing notes. So I do want it to be slower. Um, if I'm typing up notes, again, the slower kind of helps and then pausing as needed. But at this point, I am looking, the first, this next pass through, I'm going to go through and look at all the things that I felt like went really well. Um, and I'm like, I want to take mental notes. Okay, okay, like that was a really nice whatever. I'm not focusing on any thing that's not looking good. I'm trying to push those all out of my mind right now. I'm just strictly looking at, you know, 
what are some things, especially in areas that maybe we've struggled in the past, what are some things went well? So like, I'd look at that A-frame hit and be like, hey, that's a nice A-frame hit. Okay, note that. Like looking at a weave entry, if my dog has been struggling, okay, cool. Like there's a really nice weave entry. And I'm actually writing these things down. These aren't just mental notes. Like I am actually typing these or writing these down. Like um, I really enjoyed, you know, how we did that backside there. I thought that went really well that I was, you know, able to execute the blind. Um, and where there's parts where I'm not finding good things, that's fine. I just don't think of anything. I don't want to focus on anything negative. So I'm just focusing on like looking at myself, looking at the dog, um, depending on the type of course I might look, I might even do this two times where the first time I'm strictly focused on the dog's movement and looking at like what, how well my dog is moving, what are some really good things that my dog is doing? And then watch it again and look at myself. What am I doing? Um, what are some really good things that, you know, where am I seeing really strong connection that I'm really happy with? all the positive things and like make this list as long as you can. Um, this is a really important part that people often forget um, because it is really important to find the, the positive outcomes of every run, not just the negative. So then I am going to go back again, watch the run a third time. And this one, I am strictly looking at the dog. Um, I'm not looking at myself right now. And I am looking for things that I don't like. Um, so now I'm switching over to being a little bit more critical. Um, so like in this case, I'm looking, I'm like, um, I'm looking at the dog. I'm not looking at me right now. What is the dog doing? Oh, his start line's not great. He's kind of creeping. I'm focusing on the dog. I want to see how the dog is moving. I don't want my eyes darting back and forth from the person to the dog because I want to um, isolate the two right now because um, it's really hard to see what the dog is doing Um if you're bouncing back and forth. So I want to see what the dog is doing at this moment. So I'm looking, uh, I'm looking at the dog's path. I'm looking at the dog's collection. I'm looking at all the things that the dog is doing and noticing things that maybe I don't like, um, things that could be cleaned up. You know, I get to this teeter, maybe that's not the cleanest um, stick at the end, according to my criteria. Um, so I would take a note of that, you know, hey, the teeter wasn't great. Um, noticing a wide turn here. Obviously, this is where we faulted. So there's a bar there. So I'm going to make a note of the bar. Um, and I'm, again, focusing on the dog. What is the dog doing throughout the course? Um, here, there's a really wide turn. He's head checking, I think, a bar setter. So like noticing those little things. And again, if you're not looking at the dog, and you're looking at the handler in that situation, you might you might miss little things like he jumped wide and you can see his eyes, even though it's blocked with a logo, his eyes aren't on the course. Like he's looking clearly at something else. And so I don't want to look at me in this case. I'm looking at the dog so I can notice these little things like, hmm, I wonder what he's looking at. But also that's good to note that if there's maybe some distracting Thing in a corner I need to you know, be more aware so I can help him stay focused on course being a young dog that might be something I need to work on um, with him so again looking at the dog through the whole course and then I go through another time and I look at me so what am I doing on course um, looking at my connection with my dog looking at my handling I'm not looking at the dog at this point I'm looking at myself looking at where I'm at, how I'm running, am I clearly cueing things? Am I um, in the right position to cue things? Could I be in better positions? Um, could I have done fronts instead of blinds or um, you know, blinds instead of rears? So I'm gonna be very critical of my handling choices at this point. So like in this case, you know, I chose to handle this as a, a blind. I thought the blind was a little late, but those are little things I'm going to take note of and continue to journal about um, for this run. Um, and I'll do this throughout the entire run. So again, this is my fourth time through. So I've seen this a bunch of times, um, you know, and then I really look at the mistakes that were made. So then like here, a bar fell or maybe that was an off course so I might go back and analyze this a little bit more where I can click back and YouTube is really great for this um, like I said it's just easier to manipulate your videos but you know 
was this too much of a D cell Q? Probably. Um, there are other factors I might note, like the sun could have been in his face for this. Um, I did have that concern going into the ring, the way the sun was going in, um, the angle of it, the brightness of it. Um, I was overly, you know, so these are things I'm going to write down. I was overly concerned about the sun. I was overly concerned about this off course jump, um, number one here. So I really put on a really strong D-cell cue here um, and the bar fell as a result. So uh, making sure I'm writing all these little details down um, in my notes. So once I have all of that, that is my, my summary for each run. So it's basically four times through a video and then you have a list of things that went well and a list of things that um, could be improved on. And then from that, I will make um, an action list, um, things that need to go into a training plan, maybe things that are just uh, one-offs um, that I just want to chalk off as, again, maybe that bar and that D cell, like maybe I just want to blame it on the sun and I don't really want to take that into account because, um, you know, I really feel strongly it was the sun and I'm not going to be stressed about it. So it doesn't go into an action plan. It's literally just a line item in a journal at that point. So that's kind of the review process for me. Again, four times through at a, at a minimum, um, slower speed, um, and then using uh, YouTube or something to help review the video. You can do it on your phone as well. Um, it is nice to have a bigger screen, being able to do this, you know, even full screen helps um, to really see again, when you got these um, plug and flex videos and your dog's kind of small, um, it can be helped to kind of be able to zoom in. But you know, on your phone too, you can have, you can zoom in even better in some cases or putting it into iMovie and doing a zoomed in version. Um, you can go pretty crazy with that. So we talk about like, what I'm looking at when I'm watching the videos. And then, so the question is like, where do I put all this information? How do I make this information helpful? And that's what I really wanted to share as well. So um, like I said, paper and pen, you can keep a journal. Um, that's great. Um, a lot of people still do that. You can type up a separate journal, uh, like I've done here in Notion. Um, I put a link to the YouTube video I put, you know, my list of areas to improve, things that went well, and maybe some action items that are coming out of this uh, clip. And then I have a whole journal of all of our videos um, with all of our notes, and then I compile that separately. So this is Notion. There's other apps. Evernote is another great one that people use for this. This is just a basic note-taking uh, application that you can use. Um, one other cool thing I like to do, or I've done in the past, is. Um, adding comments here in right on my YouTube video. This is a an unlisted video or private, you can make it whatever. So these comments aren't seen by anybody else if they don't have a link to this video. So you could put a note right here. Um, as you're watching the video, you can be typing things that went well, and then you can just do a stream of consciousness, you know, good connection, you know, at one, uh, good A frame. Like you can just keep going and just keep writing your notes um, for each time you do a pass. So like, I'll leave that as a comment and then like things to improve. So as I'm watching it on the things to improve, you know, or things you notice about the dog, um, you can just type this all out in your comments right here on your video. And then you don't have to go back and forth between things. Um, all your notes when you want to reference anything about this run, it's all just right here in your YouTube link. Um, you can also then, if you're sharing this with a trainer, um, all you have to do is send them the YouTube link um, and they have all your thoughts as well. And you could encourage your trainer to put their thoughts here as well. So like if I sent this to my trainer, my trainer could, you know, it would be their face here and they would be adding comments. Hey, I really like that you did this. You know, this is something I noticed that maybe you could improve on and you could have their feedback built right into your feedback. So I really like this option um, to utilize YouTube a little bit more. Um, you do have to, if you uh, upload your videos and you don't mark them, if you mark them as kid friendly, you're not allowed to have comment section. I don't know if you've noticed this, but um, when you upload a YouTube, you have the option of like, is this, vi this video suitable for kids? Yes or no. Um, if you say it is suitable for kids, which clearly it is, it's a dog, agility video, um, you're not allowed to have comments. You have to change that setting to um, 
is not is um not suitable for kids. Um, for whatever reason, comments are kids can't see comments. So um, it's just counterintuitive because it's just a dog agility video, but um, that's a setting you have to change if you want to utilize the comments feature in YouTube. Um, so there's that option. Another thing I really like, um, you can do the same thing in Google Drive. Um, you can um, play your video in Google Drive and um, if you don't have YouTube or don't want to use YouTube, and you can do the same thing with comments here. You can add a comment, um, things that went well, and you can just start typing. Um, and then you can add another comment, things to improve, comment. And again, you can send this to a trainer via Google Drive Share. You can share it with somebody and they can add comments as well, as long as you turn that feature on to allow commenting from others. So this is great. Uh, this is a great way to collaborate with other people um, and also keep your videos and your notes together. So there's that option. Um, another option, <laughs> just because I wanted to go through as many as I could, um, Google Drive allow you just the speed. I No, it does not. Um, or maybe it does now, yes. Um, playback speed, it does. Uh, because it's a YouTube interface. So it does the same thing as YouTube. Um, so if you upload to Google Drive your MP4 formats, um, it plays kind of like a YouTube video uh, built right in. So you have the same um, playback speed settings. So that's a great option as well if you don't want to. Sometimes I get it, like uploading to YouTube is time consuming. You have to title things and all that where you can just dump videos into Google Drive. So in a way it is faster to do it this way, which is why I wanted to show that. A lot of the same features exist in Google Drive as I do on YouTube. Um, and I think most people find it more um, quicker to do. You might just run out of storage faster and you have to get more storage. Click the button here, get more storage. Um, if you're going to really dump and maintain this as like your video repository versus like YouTube, I don't think there's like a limit to how many videos you can have on YouTube. So you might just have to play with that a little bit or you know, pay, I think it's like 15 bucks or something for more storage on Google Drive. Um, and you can link out, like say same thing with this like diary, like I put a YouTube video link here, you can link out um, a Google Drive to any of these um, documents as well. I just chose the YouTube, but you can link out from any um, file sharing platform. Um, the one other thing I really like to use, um, is Dropbox. So if you already have a Dropbox account, um, what's really cool that the other ones don't do, and I need to hide this. Um, sorry, it's the you. It's the uh, the far for Zoom. Okay. So when I'm watching the video here in Dropbox, you can change the speed just like in um, YouTube. Um, doesn't have as many options, but you still can slow it down. What you can do is add your thoughts and you can tick this box to put it with the exact time marker you want that thought to be associated with. So if you want to put your thought about, um, sorry, I'm gonna mute this. It's really annoying. Uh, it's slow motion. Um, so if I wanna put this thought right here about this bar, I could add my thought, click this box. It says at 24 seconds and I can put, bar fell, um, you know, too much D cell, maybe due to sun. Like, you know, you could put your notes here and you can put more than one there. Um, you could add your, another thought about something good around that or something else you want to put. But then you have a running list of um, your notes based on the exact timestamp um, in the video. Um, so it, it kind of links it all together. Um, and then when you go back to play your video, um, if you want to refresh yourself on that note later, you can just click right on that and it takes you and freezes it right at that. So you can look at that that spot again, um, look at your note, look at the video, and it, it kind of syncs it all together. You can add general notes too that aren't 
um, like if you don't click this box, it's just going to add it to the video. But if you click the box, it will add it to that very specific timestamp. So that's a really cool feature that Dropbox has. Um, I believe anyone can get Dropbox for free still with minimal storage. You have to pay to upgrade if you want to store a ton of videos in it. Um, but I do really like Dropbox. So I use it. I've been using it for like 10 years. Um, and they keep adding features. I'm like, this is one that they've added that's really cool. You can still, same thing, you can share this video. Trainers can comment on it. Um, other people can comment on it and do the same thing where they can click the box and like put a note. Like your trainer could click the box. Maybe that's not the part they want you to see. They want you to look at um, what your body was doing um, at 23 seconds here. And so they might say, you know, they might click the box here and add their thoughts to like, hey, look at yourself right here at this freeze frame and see what you're doing. And so it's a great way for trainers to give you feedback if you work with your trainer in that way. Um, yeah, so that's um, some of the ways to, to view your videos. Um, notions like a way to organize your videos and your thoughts and like a journal. Another thing I like to use, Airtable is kind of new to a lot of people, but um, this one is a quick way to make, um, see what your action items are and what to work on. So similar to my Notion journal, what I do is um, I put my runs, the day of the run, a link to the video. So YouTube or um, whatever, you know, maybe it's Google Drive. Um, and I write my, you know, all my positive things here. Um, I write my areas, my whole long summary of areas to improve, but then I, for my action items, I actually make them drop down things. So like this one, like I want to say start lines, collected jumps. And as I'm, there's already some collect here, but I can create new ones. Um, maybe it's rear crosses aren't on the drop down list right now. So rear crosses, I can always add that as an option. And then what I do is I take it and I look at it. And I have it count how many times each thing comes up. And this is really how I can build a training plan. So now I have all my videos and I can have years worth of videos, a years, and I can even filter it and say, well, only show me the last six months. Show me what my last, my issues were the last six months. Show me what my issues were just from US Open. Um, show me what my issues were for the past year. And it does not count for you. So like if you had, 30 videos in here and you use start line as a problem on 28 of them, you could see on this list, start lines going to come up to the top and be like, hey, you use, you reference start lines as your biggest problem. Um, so that gives you the information you need to, you know, go back to your training plans and create a training plan um, versus having to go through each video and like look at your action items. Um, this is a great way to like summarize and see it all from a from a table perspective and you could do something similar in excel um, and make like a pivot table on this um column here it's just uh Airtable makes it it's like built into Airtable. it's a little bit more friendly um so again Airtable is new i'm assuming most people have not dabbled with Airtable yet but i am happy to um, share like this template so you can to utilize it if you're interested um, you just have to send me a message so I can email it to you. Um, so if you like Facebook message me with your email address, I can send you the template and I can like, help explain it a little bit more if you're interested in trying it. I believe you could try Airtable for free as well um, if you're just um, doing some of the basic features that this table has. So just some options I wanted to go over with how to do video review and then what to do with that information, just because I think it's a underutilized conversation in Dr. Boards. So that's all I have. I was hoping to hit 30 minutes, so I did. Um, I'm open for questions. I can show you any details for any of these things. If you have any, you can unmute and just ask. Um, or if you want to type up your comments, you can do that too. Um, happy to take any questions at this time. If not, um, fine, you can message me later. Um, the recording will be up. I did go through this really fast. So if you want to see anything in more detail, um, feel free to look at the um, 
recording that I post. Um, you can go through this again and see how maybe you want to try some of these different things. You want to try one for a little while and then um, maybe you don't like it. So then you want to go back and you want to reference this again. You can always go back and reference this video and try one of the other methods that might work for you. Um, but if you need referrals on any of those applications, I think like Dropbox, Airtable, um, I think I have like a I don't have like affiliate links, but I think I have like send a friend a link and you might like Dropbox. I think you get extra storage if you send friends links. I I don't know, but I can double I can double check if you're interested in trying any of that that you haven't tried yet and it's all new. Um, yeah, that's an option. You can always just message me and I'm happy to help get you guys started on any of that stuff. So other than that, if there's no other questions, we'll wrap it up because trying to keep it a little bit shorter tonight um, than normal. Um, awesome. So thanks you guys for joining and I guess I will see you, uh, at another time. Thanks, Have a good night. Thanks. You're welcome.